Is it the last salmon forest? That depends. That depends on technicalities. You know, could you say that someplace in northern British Columbia is the last salmon forest? Yeah, but it'd be a small section. This is the last section that's, you know, we've got over 450 miles north to south in the Tongass. And I'm really, you know, with, with pushing 20,000 miles worth of anadromous streams, I doubt if you could go more than five or 10 miles in any one direction in August and not smell salmon, you know, not smell salmon in the woods, not smell, not smell that fertilizer coming out of the sea, you know, not smell, you know, the things that drive the life of the forest. So I think that on a large scale, you know, on a mega scale, yeah, it's the last salmon. My connection to fishing and the Tongass is primarily in the commercial fishing industry. Uh, being involved in a sustainable fishery is really important to myself and my family. Uh, and making sure that we have a way to feed our families with the finest uh, products out there. And the Tongass ecosystem can provide the cleanest, purest, freshest water to sustain uh, salmon of all species. In, uh, in these areas and not only sustain uh, environmentally but economically. Uh, the salmon here is uh, it's stabilizing economic influence. The Tongass produces roughly 70% of, of all the salmon on the national forest system in the United States. And it's also responsible, the region southeast Alaska is responsible for roughly 19% of the salmon harvested across the whole entire Pacific Rim. So it's an incredibly productive place. And uh, you know, maybe it's the fact that we've got 75,000 people is all. And we're kind of uh, tucked into the corner of uh, Canada but it just kind of gets overlooked is what I've seen over the years. And it's really time that we start acknowledging the Tongass for, for that productivity and for the lifestyles that it enables and um, protect what we've got. This knee-jerk reaction from, I think, sometimes industry who just, you know, does that or people, I don't think, understand the whole issue, but which is that, oh, this whole environmental protection thing is to keep the humans out, to get rid of jobs, and to get rid of people using the environment. You know, that you won't be able to log, you won't be able to mine, trap, fish, do any of that. And that, that's just flat wrong. I mean, the, the goal of this campaign is to make sure that these activities will continue in, in perpetuity, you know, for seven generations and, and longer. Um, you know, this is not a, a desire to take people out of the woods. You know, we want people to enjoy these places, to own them, to think that they, you know, that it's part of them, that they'll work to protect them. So, you know, it, it, it's just a knee jerk we see from industry who doesn't like any any of these environmental protection things, and they it's an easy message for them to say, oh, this is just anti job. Um, and then you have some people that I just don't think understand this and think that, you know, this is some aspect of the much more radical green movement that wants to just put a fence around this and keep people out and make it a pretty place. You know, it, it doesn't do anybody any good if it's just a museum place, museum piece you can look at. You know, you want to get in here and catch fish, eat fish, shoot deer, um, you know, hunt and fish, kayak, whatever you like to do in there. But uh, 
if it just sits there behind a fence, you know, then it's just a pretty thing you can look at. So, um, I mean, clearly we can't sustain the level of logging or even the level of fishing we saw, you know, 100 years ago. You know, we went through a big binge in the lower 48 and up here, and clearly that was just unsustainable. So we're now back down to a, uh, a level that's, that's sustainable and, and protects it. So you can take trees out of this environment, you just can't take all of them. <laughs> So it's, it comes back to a, a question of balance here. Right. But you know, to say this is an anti-job thing, it's, it's actually pro-job. I mean, this protects fishing jobs. It protects the outdoor recreation industry. It protects people who sell hunting and fishing equipment. So tremendous amount of jobs and dollars dependent on um, healthy fish and healthy trees. Um, it, 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 and there is going to be a balance in there between things like logging and mining and protection and fishing. It just probably haven't quite gotten exactly there yet. Uh, I support the Tonga 77 proposal for watershed measures, primarily to extend the sustainable management practices of the state of Alaska, which is, is globally is held as the pinnacle of seafood and uh, maritime uh, management. And if we can extend that style of management all the way up into the, the watershed and the land base itself, we can be an example for the rest of the world, but not just leading by example, but actually to ensure that our fisheries are sustainable, our environment is sustainable. If our environment is sustainable, our economies are sustainable. And if our economies are sustainable, uh, we can continue having fish, not just, uh, not just for ourselves, but for tomorrow. Uh, the goal is to fish for the future, not for today, and make sure our children and our grandchildren can have salmon as well.